Hello and welcome to Ecocentric. I'm your host, Jake Slesky. We've got a live environmental news to cover for this week, so let's get started. Our first story comes from Russia because 94% of Russians see environmental pollution as a pressing concern, according to a recent poll. Landfills were named as the top problem, with water, forest, and air pollution also named. The poll, taken by Moscow's Higher School of Economics, brought fascinating results. In fact, only 1% of Russians don't believe that environmental issues exist in their region. Putin's environmental policy is mixed, with half-hearted support for action on climate change and strong support for protections on endangered species. Back to the United States. In a second legal blow in the past month to Trump's environmental policy, offshore drilling in the Arctic has been deemed unlawful. Trump attempted to undo President Obama's policy at oil drilling in vulnerable areas of the Arctic Circle with an executive order. Judge Sharon Gleason ruled that this executive order is unlawful because it violates the Outer Continental Shelf Land Act, which only allows Congress to lease protected land for oil drilling. Her ruling represents the second successful challenge to Trump's abusive oil drilling policy in the last 30 days, as well as Gleason's second major ruling against the current administration since 2017. Each of these legal challenges has brought the environmental activists bringing Trump's actions to court closer to dismantling its aim to quote, unleash American energy. It's important to remember why we're fighting climate change. More than 60 million people were impacted by abnormally extreme weather in 2018. The increase in not only the intensity of storms, but storms themselves will continue with the worsening of climate change. We must strongly reduce emissions if we want to reduce the amount of unnecessary deaths yet to come. Our next story takes us to Australia, where a startup, CCT Energy Storage, claims that they have built the first functioning thermal battery, which could rapidly accelerate the transition to renewable energy. The startup claims that the battery has a lifetime of 20 years and can store six times the amount of energy as lithium-ion batteries, which are the standard, and only costs 70% of the price. The device works by heating up and melting silicon, and when energy is required, a heat engine is used to gain it. Hundreds of megawatts of power are potentially easily accessible with this new device. Our next story is interesting. I really didn't expect it and it was surprised by my research. Shell, an oil company, has left a major oil lobby due to material misalignment and the group's unwillingness to meet the Paris Climate Accords. This is not the first time Shell has broken ranks. Shell has been far less aggressive and damaging than its oil counterparts. For example, the company supports the Paris Climate Accord. For two, it supports carbon pricing. For three, Shell quietly decided not to challenge the EPA's clean power plan in 2015 when many other oil companies did. Last year, Shell decided to link the pay of executives with emissions reduction targets, a move that was unpopular with its shareholders. Shell is far from a pro-environmental group, but they are far less anti-environment than their counterparts. Speaking of oil lobbyists, uh, after Mitch McConnell's push for a vote to effectively discredit the Green New Deal, Republicans are upset with Democrats' similar behavior with the new climate bill. Democrats are attempting to bypass the Energy and Commerce Committee to pass environmental regulations targeting emissions. Republicans on the committee have criticized the move as a ploy to bring the legislation to a House vote before the committee can tailor it. However, this move follows Mitch McConnell's force to vote in the Green New Deal, a similar action to kill legislation before it could reach a House vote. If passed, the Democrat, the Democrat penned legislation would require the U.S. to comply with the Paris Climate Accord emission standard. And in another blow to the climate delayers, a panel on climate change that was disbanded by Trump has continued its work with the support of fellow scholars and scientists. The Advisory Committee for the Sustained National Climate Assessment was disbanded by the Trump administration in 2017 because it did not have enough members affiliated with the industry, sparking outrage among climate activists and experts. The Obama era group was quickly invited to continue its climate assessment with the aid of Columbia University and the American Meteorological Society. The committee, now called the Science to Climate Action Network, or SCAN, has released multiple reports detailing the burgeoning threat of climate change and what nations and industries need to do to combat it. However, the US government no longer has any obligation to listen to SCAN because it is not a federal committee, severely limiting its potential influence. Despite the federal government's refusal to accept SCAN's findings, the organization's climate reports are still making major news and drawing enough attention to prompt President, President Trump to publicly denounce them. That's all for today, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. You can also follow us on Instagram at WeAreEcocentric. Well, that's all for me, and now it's your turn to save the world. See you next week.